Welcome. Good morning, Goeie Moore. Do you see how I helped my wife up, up the stage? I was a wedding a marriage seminar yesterday. So. Well done. Yeah. Welcome to church, everybody. This is the day that the Lord has made, Amen. and we get to rejoice and be glad in it, Amen. and we will, right? Amen. Amen. Who's here for the very first time? Come on, guys, let's give them a warm, living word. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. We hope you guys feel right at home and that you'll enjoy the service with us. In this church, everybody is welcome. Nobody's perfect, but we serve a perfect God. Amen. 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 Our online family, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Today is actually a day that you want to be in church. It's a pity that you can't be. But I want you to really turn up the volume today Amen. because we have some special people in the house Amen. today. <laughs> Amen. And um, we had them here all of yesterday. We did the, the marriage um, seminar, the Let's Talk Marriage Marriage Seminar. And Rian and I chatted last night and we just decided um, we're going to keep them here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're just gonna, you know, things happen in Mauritius. We passports get lost and flights yeah. get cancelled. <laughs> Blocked at the airport. Who knows? Amen. We were so so blessed, and we can't wait for this morning. Amen, amen. And as ladies, just in case you haven't heard, um, after service, after Heinz is going to be um, preaching today. Aleta is going to do a master class in image consulting. So I'm sure you can still speak to Marlies and them if you want to join that. Um, look, it can't hurt. They say even an old barn looks good <laughs> if you paint it now and then. So, you know, <laughs> use it, don't use it. I, I don't know. What exactly did you learn yesterday? <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Look, I think Heinz and Aletta, they don't really need an introduction, but just a bit of background. They're going to lead us into worship a bit later. Um, Heinz and Aletta and their children, Leon, Simeon, uh, Ruben and Alana, I think they in the children's church, uh, live in Somerset West, in Cape Town, amper so moistus Mauritius, but not, yeah. not quite. Um, as you know, Heinz um, is a music legend, I'm not even going to go into all the detail, lots of awards, lots of competitions. Um, I said yesterday, he's actually got a Disney soundtrack. My wife's married to a Disney character, <laughs> so we're very, very similar. Um, <laughs> but 
I just want to say one thing. After yesterday, and you heard him this morning if you were early, it's actually true that his voice can actually melt butter. <laughs> Amen. So I'm just saying, um, he, after making it big in the pop music industry, he turned his attention towards the contemporary Christian market, um, and we're so excited about uh, just him uh, speaking to us this morning. Amen. Amen. And as Rian mentioned, of course, Aleta, I'm so thankful for you. <laughs> I can't wait for this afternoon um, for the masterclass. Of course, she's a style icon. Um, she's so many things, actually. She's a motivational speaker. She's a songwriter. Uh, she's an author. There's some books available, guys, yeah, after the service the that back. you can come and check it out. In fact, Heinz and Aleta wrote a book together, of course, on marriage. So if you missed yesterday... Wink, 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 clap. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> and of course, when she's not ruling the fashion scene, she's rocking the role of mom to these four beautiful kids, yeah. and uh, she's supporting sp uh, spouse to, to Heinz. Yeah, I think very important is, um, as I said yesterday, they have a thriving church in Somerset West in the Cape, and Heinz is pastor there, and together with Aleta, they, um, they lead the worship, and Something, spending time with them and being with them yesterday is their love for God, their love for the Word of God. And that was just, it's amazing. So I know you guys are going to be blessed this morning and, and we can't wait for them just to lead us into worship as we, as we start service now. So church, can we please give a big welcome to Heinz and Aleta. Amen. Good morning, Living Word Church. Yes, it's great to be with you. Uh, back home, we always say Sunday is fun day because we don't have to go to church. We get to go to church. Amen. Amen. What a privilege. What an honor. Good morning, children. It's great to see you all. They, yeah, everyone can stand together. We're going to praise Jesus and the kids are joining us as well. So why do we praise and worship? Simple, the Bible says so. And if we believe the Bible and we call ourselves Christians and believers of God, we will be obedient to the Word of God. I want to give you a challenge for the week. Go and read and study Psalm 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, and 100. Read all of them in a row. And you will see they all start with similar things. Sing unto the Lord. Make a, make a shout of joy. Sing a new song. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Clap your hands. And it just speaks about how great our God is. So this morning, this is what we do. I'm also going to talk about this, how all of who we are is supposed to be for His kingdom. And we're going to start doing that by already now just giving of ourselves. When David, the King David, when he brought the Ark of the Covenant into Jerusalem, he, he stripped himself of all dignity. He took off his clothes. He was dancing in his underwear. And his wife judged him. And God chose David's side. And, so, and David said, I will be even more undignified for this God because I don't fear man. I fear God, Amen. the holy God of Israel. And that is who we are as well if we call ourselves believers in Christ. Amen? Amen. Morning, children. It's so good to see you. Are you ready to praise Jesus? Yes. Are we going to show the adults how it's done? Yes. We're going to lift our hands. We're going to do this. And we're going to clap. Amen? All right. Let's do this. This is called praise. Yeah. Let's put our hands together. Hallelujah.
It's above every other name. Amen. The name of Jesus Christ. We can go. Amen. And when we speak this name, we can know that it carries power. It carries breakthrough. The very name of Jesus means salvation to my people. Amen. So let's just speak that over our lives and over this city. Thank you, Lord. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Amen. Come on. Over every heart and every mind. Because I know there is peace within your presence. I speak. I speak Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Every dark addiction starts to break, declaring, declaring there is hope and there is freedom. I speak, I speak Jesus. 
Church, shout 
proclaim his goodness. How many of you know that God loves you? And his goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life. Amazing love that welcomes me, the kindness of mercy that bought with blood wholeheartedly my soul undeserving. Lift up his name. God, you're so good. He's so good. God, you're so good. You're so good to me. Behold the cross, H2A.
Give God a praise offering. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He is a good, good father. And because he's a good father, we can call ourselves his children. Can you start that again, please? Still into 
Thank you that we can find our identity in you as our good heavenly father. Let's give God a praise offering. Thank you, Jesus. as their children go to Trinity Kids this morning. seats open right in the front front if you want to come and sit here it's very special in the front you you can come <laughs> people are afraid to sit in the front I do not know why I'm sure Heinz won't pick on you <laughs> so welcome to church everybody it's nice to see you all here this morning we do see a lot of New faces, visitors on holiday, and just people who've never come to church. Welcome today to church. I'm so ha happy that you made it today. If you are here for the very first time and you do stay in the north, or if you want to drive far to this church, please give me your name and your number. After the service, I will be at the back with my phone. You just give me your name, your number, and you can go. That's all. I won't bother you further. So um, this morning, I'm not going to do the offerings, but I do have a whole list of announcements. So our marriage seminar was yesterday, as you all heard. Heinz and Aleta. For those who didn't hear, they are here <laughs> from, from all the way from South Africa. If you, some people came in late, they didn't hear. It's Heinz and Aleta Winkler, all the way from South Africa. And they did the marriage seminar yesterday for us. And it was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, Many laughs were laughed and tears were cried. But at the end, we all were blessed, <laughs> even though we had to put out some tissues, but it was fine. <laughs> so, and speaking of marriages, we have two very special couples in church this morning. First up, Alan and Linda, where are you? There they are. Just raise your hands. People, look at Alan and Linda. <laughs> yeah, stand up. You can stand up. So it is their um, wedding anniversary today, and they have been married 45 years today. Wow. <laughs> and then Rian quickly told me, yes, um, Andre and Chantal, did I get it right? It is friends of somebody, yes. <laughs> <laughs> there, it's your wedding anniversary today, and it's 16 years. Oh. 23. 23 years, oh, oh wow. wow. <laughs> And 
they are here on holiday and they chose today to come and visit wow. us. It's amazing. That's amazing. <laughs> so um, Aleta and Heinz, they do have stock of their books and other stuff. <laughs> it's at the back right next to the window and you guys will be there afterwards. So if you want to buy one of their books or their projects, they will be there. You can speak to them directly. And then I, I do agree with you that they should stay in Mauritius. <laughs> So, oh yeah. So next week it's Easter. You can stay for Easter. <laughs> so um, because Easter or Good Friday is not a public holiday in Mauritius, but it is a very big day for our Christian life. So we decided to do a Good Friday evening service well on Friday night. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we are planning something amazing. So it's next day is Saturday, you can sleep late. Come to church on Friday night, it's going to be amazing. Then on Sunday, obviously, we will have a church service, but it's going to be a Resurrection Sunday, and it's going to be great. <laughs> the church is full now. But invite your friends that you already invited today, bring them back next week. Yes. They need to hear the good message and hope of Jesus Christ. <laughs> and then, let me see. Oh, importantly, Rudo. <laughs> Rudo, just wave your hands. Don't hide. <laughs> so Rudo is in charge of our young adults. They are called Lamp Stands. Yeah. <laughs> so on Saturday morning, um, Lamp Stands, the young adults, that it will be their very first meeting in church from 9 to 11.30. All the young adults, if, even if you do feel like a young adult, come and join them. I'm sure they will, they will welcome you. So it's Saturday, the 30th of March in church at 9. If you want more info, speak to Rudo. She will be happy to explain to you and tell you what you need to know. Not, not Jan. Jan, you are not invited. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you can come to our Wednesday word group in the morning. We have Inspire word group. It is especially for those of you who don't really want to drive around at night to find it difficult or, or, or mature people. That's not mine. It's Rian's words, not mine. <laughs> and, and then some of you do work strange hours that work at night. So we have a Wednesday morning word group. It's called Inspire. It's at church from 9, 9.30. 9.30. So it's even late. You can sleep late and come to church. <laughs> so that is the word group for the mature people. And even if you're not mature and you want to join, come. <laughs> we have groups for everybody in this church. <laughs> And then obviously our word groups, our normal ones, the English ones and the French ones, also on a Wednesday, but that's at night. If you want any info about all of this I'm saying on our website, you know, I keep on hammering the website because it's an amazing website. It's www.livingwordmauritius.com. It's easy. On there, you will find a lot of our activities for April. I have a list, but I think I'm not going to do it today. It's like... There is something for, let me quickly tell you, for April, only April, you know, you know some of the, uh, the kids are on holidays starting next week, so it's amazing. Yeah, Heinz, take a seat. <laughs> we, we are a church that's doing stuff. So let me tell you, we have faithful fishing. We have a hiking day. We have a family movie night. We have baptism Sunday. We have youth. We have work groups. We have the Bloom Ladies meeting and the men's meeting. All for April. Amen. So, wow. yeah. <laughs> it's a lot. So, if you really want to get involved somewhere, I'm sure there's something that you like to do. And if you don't like anything, just come and watch the movie. That's easy. You can just sit there. You don't have to do anything. Just come and watch a movie. But we do want to encourage you all to come to the events, to get involved in the church. It's, it's really all these events. We are not just doing it for summer, for just doing it. We want to build community in the church. And by doing that, we, we get to know each other. That's how we grow as a church and as people. Okay, Heinz, I'm done. You can come and preach. I wonder what you're like on Red Bull. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And I just, I just want to say, we will gladly come and stay here on and off if someone sponsors a house and some flights four times a year, little house on the beach, 
We're keen, man. Yeah. We're very keen. I just have this little responsibility back home of a church of my own <laughs> that we have to lead. But we will gladly have a secondary home right here with you guys. So let's, let's you know, I'm going to talk about tithes and offerings now. So <laughs> we, can, <laughs> we can do a special offering for the Winkler House in Mauritius. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. All right. <laughs> um, it's such a privilege to be here this morning and for us to be a part of Living Word and what God is doing in this community. And uh, what an exciting time to be alive and to be part of this community. You guys are very blessed. You guys are very lucky to have leaders that care so much and love so much. Can we just honor yeah. uh, Rian and Marlies yeah. today, your pastors? They're amazing people. They, I can tell, and this is, this is a, a value that I really respect in, le in leaders. They love you so much that they will tell you the truth about God's Word. Amen. And for me, that is the sign of a true uh, person that's been called to teach and preach the Word of God. Um, and they really do love you. And they really do want to see God come in a powerful way in this area and in this nation. And um, you're very lucky. You've got a captive audience on an island. <laughs> they can't go anywhere. Well, sort of. So, <laughs> so you, when you do outreaches, they can only run so far. And then you ha they have to stop at the beach. And then you can... So... <laughs> What a, what a great opportunity. <laughs> anyway, but it's, it's wonderful to see that. Um, and uh, I was telling the people yesterday that, you know, we've been to Mauritius twice before on holiday. And nothing went wrong at all. Nothing in the travel. The flights were on time. No one got sick. No one got injured. This trip, flights delayed. Got here late. Two of our children have been very ill. Like they can't even stand up straight. For four days in a row, three, five days in a row, we had sick children. One almost broke his finger. Uh, we've, it's been interesting. Yeah. Um, and, and, and this is the first time that we're coming to minister. So we know that the enemy is out, and he does not want the gospel preached. He does not want to see marriages healed. He does not want to see families whole. That's his plan, is to destroy that which God has created. But we want to stand with churches like this who want to see the will of God come. Amen? Amen. And the way that we do that is we say in our finances, we put God first. And we put God first by saying that I will sow a seed as God leads me in my local church. Mm -hmm. I want to read to you a scripture that you may have heard before, but this is so powerful. I want to read it to you in the context that it's given. Because some of we normally just hear the one part. I want to read you the context. So in Malachi 3, from verse 6, the Lord is speaking to the people of God through the prophet Malachi. This is the last book of the Old Testament. He says, For I am the Lord, I do not change. I want you to notice that. Yeah. I do not change. So when God has said something, when He has decided something, and when He says who He is, that will never change. Amen. Therefore, you are not consumed, O sons of Jacob. Yet from the days of your fathers, you've gone away from my ordinances and have not kept them. What is He saying? You're not consumed. Why? Because I have a plan for you. Even though you've been disobedient, and I, as a just God, am, I, I am, I'm in my right to destroy you, I will not, because I keep my word to the people that I have a covenant with. You have not kept my ordinances, and have not kept them. Return to me, and I will return to you, says the Lord. Sure. But you said, in what way shall we return? So they are oblivious to the fact that they've moved away from God. Hmm. In what way have we, shall we return? And then God says, will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, in what way have we robbed you? Once again, clueless, oblivious, not aware. But you say, well, um, and then God says, in tithes and offerings. You are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house, and try me now in this. Other translation says, test me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. I, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. How many of you want to see God open up the heavens Amen. and the storehouse of God just filled up? Come on. Yeah. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground. How many of you want God to protect you from the enemy stealing what you are working for? Yeah. 
You want to see that? Yes. I want to see that. Mm. Nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field, says the Lord of hosts. And all nations will call you blessed, for you will be a delightful land, says the Lord of hosts. Now, obviously, he's speaking to specifically the Jewish nation. But there's a principle here. The principle is if we give ourselves completely to God and everything that we own, we say, belongs to Him. Amen. Then we are living according to the Word of God. And then God can bless us. He says, if we return to Him, He will return to us. There's a New Testament scripture that's exactly the same. If you draw near to me, I will draw near to you. This is a principle right throughout the Bible. If, and if we are stingy and holding back and we are selfish with that which God has blessed us with, we do not have a mindset of God is my provider. We have a mindset of I need to hold on. I need, to, what's that? Fear. It's fear of lack. It's fear of poverty. It's fear of not having enough. And it's also saying that I trust my ability over God's ability to bless me. Amen. So that's the one side of it. The other side of it is that if we, are, if we say, I am a believer, I believe in Jesus Christ, I am a son of the most high God. It's like, okay, what does that look like practically? And one of the biggest tests for all of us is where does my finances go? Where am I, where do I know my, pro, my provision comes from? And where do I sow the money that God has blessed me with? Am I faithful? And am I obedient as God leads me? So the least we should do is a tithe, a tenth of the first fruits that God has given us. If you go on the principle of the Bible, he says, give, my, give the first of your first fruits to God first. That means before I pay anyone else, I bring, not pay, you don't pay God. You bring what is His to His storehouse. And this local church is a storehouse of God. Amen. Your pastors, your leaders are diligently working to change this area, this city, this nation for the kingdom of God. Amen. And it takes funds. And we want to see them thrive. Do you want to see them thrive? You want to see your church thrive in doing Amen. that? Amen. Anyone? Come on. Yes. yes? Amen. All right. It takes all of us to make that possible. It takes all of us saying that I will put God first and it's and I'm going to definitely put him first in my finances. Amen? Amen. So I want, you, I want you to take a moment and just close your eyes and say, Lord, I want from this moment on be faithful with how you lead me to bring the offering and the tithe. And to be generous above and beyond what you have called me to do. Show me, Lord, how I can sow and support this ministry. And I want you to know that the principle is not how much. It is whether you are giving sacrificially as God leads you. For someone that might be a hundred rupees. For you, that's, that's very hard to give. But God is putting that on your heart. For us, someone else, it might be half a million rupees. It depends on where you're at and what God is speaking to you. You remember the principle in the Bible where the, the old woman that's very poor, she brings her mites. She, she's just tired of two mites. And Jesus says she's given more than all these other people because she, she gave everything she had. Sure. How much do we really love God? And how much do we really trust Him? Amen. I want to I invite you today to be part of what God is doing with living word. And bring your tithe, your offering, and your generous giving as God leads you. Amen. We're going to sing a song as the ushers go around and you bring that into this house. Thank you so much.
You are the keeper. And there in trials and strife, you are a great protector, the one who leads to life. The only God who lives, the only God who saves, the only God who gave his life to win. so much. You guys gave so quickly. Apparently we didn't need a whole song. Couldn't wait. I like it. Thank you, Jesus. Where's the best place for me to stand? You're in the middle? Okay. Let us pray. Father God, we love you so much. We honor you. We bless you. We are here for you. You are first. We choose to love you. We choose to fear you, and we choose to trust you. Jesus, you are the word. You are the light. You are the bread of life. We fix our eyes on you, the author and the finisher of our faith, and we ask that you lead us as we delve into your word today. Father, I pray that you help me to preach truth from your word, and I pray that each heart here will be good soil for the seed of your word 
to take root and have a healthy, wholesome, life-changing harvest. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. What a privilege it is to be here today, to be able to share the word. It's kind of crazy to think that in an hour from now, our church back home starts, <laughs> and I'm already preaching um, with a two-hour difference. And, um, but what a privilege it is here today, to be here today. The message I want to share with you today, I've entitled, My All for His Kingdom. My All for His Kingdom. And it's kind of based on an old, well-known saying in a book um, called, My Utmost for His Highest. But I'm going to make it my own and say, my all for His kingdom. My all for His kingdom. And I hope that in that you hear that everything that we are should be focused on, aimed at, lived for, given for His kingdom. Amen. I want to show it to you from the scriptures today. Yesterday I said it as well. I really am so excited about the fact that this church name, church's name is Living Word. Because the Word of God is living and active. It's a double-edged sword that cuts through bone and marrow. That's what the Bible says. So what you need to know from me as I start preaching today, I know that we probably have people from different backgrounds, different denominations, uh, different traditions that you grew up in. I also grew up in a traditional church. Uh, back, in, back home, it's called the Dutch Reformed Church. Uh, it's got th strong Reformed theology, um, very strong man-made rituals in certain areas and ways that they do things. And some of what I learned was really good, and I'm grateful for that. Some of what I learned and some of what I didn't learn, I later on learned is quite vital to the Christian life. And so by saying that, I'm not here to knock any church. It's not about that. The church is God's bride. And the bride is what he's coming back for. But we have to be sure that we are a bride, part of the bride that's aligned with the word of God. The Bible is the true north that we have to base our lives upon. So what you need to know about me is that in my journey with God, I found that the best place to be and to stay is in His Word. If His Word doesn't say it, teach it, preach it, explain it, then, you know, we can have a conversation about it, but I'm not going to put my head on a block for it. At the same time, if, if things are happening and being done that's out of line with the Word of God, then I feel led to speak up and say, hey, this is not what the Bible teaches. What are we doing? So today you will probably hear stuff that challenges you. But that's what the living word does. It challenges us. Where that scripture that says it cuts through bone and marrow is when it goes deep. And it challenges. And I want you to choose today to be open to the challenge. Because I want, to, I want you to know that Christianity is not supposed and never was supposed to be comfortable. It was never supposed to be convenient. It was never supposed to be easy. Choosing to follow Jesus is the most radical, rebellious thing you can do when it comes to living in this world that is led by the devil. The prince of the power of the air is leading the sons of disobedience. That's what the Bible teaches. He is in charge of this world. If you don't believe me, please go and read the story of how Jesus, right after he was baptized, we had the Father, the Holy Spirit, and Jesus all in one scene. The Trinity was right there. The Holy Spirit came upon Jesus like a dove, and the Father spoke, and everyone heard it. He said, this is my Son, my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. And then the Bible says, immediately after that, the Holy Spirit led Jesus into the wilderness to be tempted. The Holy Spirit did. And then 40 days after no eating, the devil comes when Jesus is physically at his weakest, and he tempts him. And the second or the third temptation, he shows him all the kingdoms of the world. He says to him, I will give you all these kingdoms if you bow and worship me. 
Now, what did Jesus not do? He didn't tell him, those kingdoms don't belong to you. He didn't correct him. What did he say? It is written. Like he said the previous two times, it is written. You will serve and, and you'll worship the God alone and no one else. Depart from me, Satan. Get away. Why did he not correct him? Because the devil could make that statement. Why? Because when he tempted Eve and Eve fell and then gave the fruit to Adam and Adam fell, the dominion that God had given them was given over to the enemy. Right in the beginning, God gave us, mankind, dominion over the whole earth. And then through sin, that dominion was taken away. And there's multiple other scriptures that confirm that. So you need to know that you are in a battle. You need to know that there's an enemy who owns everything around you. If you don't believe me, what is in this nation that you're in currently, who's in control? And don't say the four families. They think they're in control. But who's really in control? It's the enemy through people. Because the Bible teaches in Ephesians 6 and 2 Corinthians 10 that our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against powers, principalities, and wicked hosts of the heavenly places. That's where your battle is. And, and we have strongholds that are operating in areas. And the fact that we came into this nation wanting to preach the gospel and getting resistance is proof of that. There's strongholds operating. The good news is, Jesus is more powerful than anything the enemy can throw at us. But the problem is the enemy is the father of lies, so he lies the best. So he can convince you of something that's not true, and you won't even know it. The problem with deception is you don't know when you are deceived. And the reason I'm saying all of this is that some of the backgrounds that we come from, and I say this because of my own experience, some of the backgrounds we come from, is the very thing that's blinding us to the truth of God. Here's a truth that you need to take hold of and wrestle with if you don't believe it straight out. Culture is man-made. Culture is man-made. And when you become born again, you become a new creation, the Bible says you are now a citizen, legal term, of heaven. It says you are seated in heaven. Heavenly places. It said you are in this world, but not from this world. Now, am I saying you can't enjoy your cultural food and your parties? No. But what I am saying is once you are born again, that cannot be your God. And that cannot rule your life. And if it is, then you're either not born again, or if you come from a place where your culture is so intertwined with some form of Christianity that you'd say, I am a Christian but you're actually a cultural Christian. And what you're doing is going through religious rituals that made up by men that makes you think that you are saved and going to heaven. But in fact, you are not. It is one of the biggest, most effective deceptions the enemy has. I fell for it. I was 16 years old and convinced I'm a Christian because my parents were Christian. I went to church. I went to um, Sunday school. I did all the, right, all the right things that people told me to do. I knew facts about Jesus, but I didn't know him personally. Here's a shocker. Good people don't go to heaven. <gasps> what? Believers in Jesus Christ who have received them, him as their Lord and Savior, they go to heaven. All right, so I'm just setting the scene. <laughs> So you understand where I'm coming from. And the thing that's great about making the word your base to work from is that if anyone comes against me and wants to argue with me, I can hold up the scriptures and say, it is written. If there's something that I say that I cannot back with the word of God, then hey, let's have a conversation. And there are some times that I go, I think, in my opinion, I believe that this means. So there are the spaces for that. But for the most important things, we can say it is written. All right? So with all of that said, I just have 20 minutes left. <laughs> all right. 
Another thing you need to know about me is because I love the Word of God, I read a lot of it. And so you will feel a little bit like my sermon is a Bible study. But I love it that way. So let's do it. Romans 12 from verse 1. Paul is speaking to a divided church in Rome. Did you know that? The Roman church was founded by Jewish believers who were at the day of Pentecost. And over time, they were joined by some Gentiles. Then the emperor kicked out the Jews of Rome because they were fighting about this name, someone called Christos. And the Romans didn't like anything that may seem, sound, smell like a riot, so they kicked him out. Then the Gentiles took over the church in Rome. Then the new emperor came and he invited the Jews back because they were good for business. Now the Jews came back to a church that was run by Gentiles for a while. Now we have Jews and Gentiles in the same church. And the Jews are telling the Gentiles, you guys just think you can do what you want. You take the grace of God and go to the far side of liberty and use grace as an excuse to sin. The Gentiles are telling the Jews, you want us Gentiles to be circumcised just so that we can you know, be in line with all the laws. And you want all these man-made legal things that are on top of the 613 laws. You want us to also live up to that stuff. But Jesus died on the cross to fulfill those. So there's this fight in the church. And Paul is writing to a divided church. They came from different backgrounds. But what they had in common is that they all said yes to Jesus as the Messiah. Yeshua is their, is their Messiah. Now he speaks in Romans 12. He's been building up this whole argument through the letter of Romans. And he gets to a point where he says to them, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God which is your reasonable service. In the ESV, it says spiritual worship. In the NIV, it says true and proper worship. Verse 2, And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove, the ESV says, that by testing you may discern what that good and acceptable and perfect will of God is. All right, we're going to stop there for now. Those first two verses are so powerful and packed with so much truth. And you can go and meditate on that. Do you know what meditating on the Word means? Anyone? Just raise your hand. This is an interactive service. You can go, yes, I know. Or no, 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 I didn't. I don't know. All right, the, the word in the Greek for meditate is the same word for regurgitate. So when a cow, you know, he's got a couple of stomachs, and they chew on the cud, they swallow, they bring it back up, and they chew it again. That's the same expression that is used for meditation. So you read the Word. You think about it. You pray about it. You read it again. You think about it. You pray about it. A quick tip I can give you for studying the Word of God that really helps a lot is when you meditate, every time you read it, read it out loud first and foremost. Secondly, read it Every time I read it, change the accent of a word, the emphasis. Change the emphasis on the words. For example, uh, let me say this. Do not be conformed to this world. 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 Do you see how it changes every time? And by the time you've, you've, you've put an emphasis on each word, you're like, this word starts coming alive. All right? Now, that also... The implication is that you have prayed, asked the Holy Spirit to lead you, and you actually love God and you believe His Word. That's very important. All right. So, but this is such a powerful couple of verses, and I love this. I want you to see the passion that Paul speaks with. He's speaking to a divided church and says, come on, listen to me. I beseech you. That word is very powerful. And he says, present your bodies a living sacrifice. What does the word present entail? When you do a presentation at work, what do you do? 
Someone gave you a, a, thing, a, a job to do. They told you, hey, go and prepare a presentation. And what do you do? You bring it and you present it. Are you with me? <laughs> so when Paul says to the Roman church, present your bodies, he says present it in a certain way. What does present in, imply? It implies that you have chosen to actually do the presentation. Because you're, you're in, in your job situation, it might be a little bit different. You feel like you don't have a choice. But with God and the church and Jesus, you do have a choice. But Paul is giving an instruction. He's giving a commandment. He's an apostle of Jesus Christ. He's telling the church, present. And we need to see that. And we have a choice. We have a choice. But actually, we don't have a choice. Because we're getting a commandment from the Word of God. And if I say I'm a Christian, then I'm, I should be in trembling before the Word of God. Say, so how can I honor and obey this word. So when an apostle of God who wrote, who wrote most of the New Testament says to me, I must do something, I should do it. Out of faith. Amen? Amen? Yeah. Come on. I'm going to get you charismatic today. You know where charisma comes from? Anyone? It comes from the word charis in the Greek which means grace. So when you are charismatic, you're actually full of grace. Amen? Amen. Amen. <laughs> Am I right, Pastor? You probably studied more than I did. All right. So he says, present what? Your bodies. What's your body? The Greek thinking was, I have a spirit, I have a soul, I have a body. And he's saying this physical flesh box that I'm in, present it. Bring it. So I need to make a choice. I need to be willing to lay down and present my body. And he says, as what? A living sacrifice. Have you ever thought about that? What is a sacrifice in, the, in this context when he's speaking to an ancient first century church filled with Jews and Gentiles? What is a sacrifice? It's an offering of an animal, right? So what did they do? That they, kill, that they kill them and then put them on a fire and brought a sacrifice to God, did they? Some of them. But some of them, they, they slaughtered first and they got the blood. Now he's saying to human beings, present your bodies a living Sacrifice. Now, I want you to imagine a live goat or a live chicken that you put on a fire while it's alive. It's a living sacrifice. It's being sacrificed in the fire. Have you ever thought about this? We read it and we go, oh, that's so nice, Paul. Living sacrifice, yes, that's beautiful language. It's so poetic and awesome, thank you. He wasn't speaking to Oxford scholars. He was speaking to Jewish and Gentile believers who are figuring out what they believe, but they know exactly what a sacrifice is. And he's saying to them, present your bodies a living sacrifice which is what? Their flesh, which represents what? The sinful nature. Put your sin on the fire, is what he's saying. And do it willingly. And he goes on. Holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. What? How's that reasonable? How is it reasonable to expect someone to die to self? I want to read you another scripture. Colossians 3 from verse 1. It says, If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is, sitting on the right hand of God. 
Set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. For you died. For you died. Is that what it says? For you died. And your life is hidden with Christ in God. Okay? Now I want you to read that again. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Why is it reasonable? Because you said that you say that Jesus is your Lord and Savior. Because you made a decision to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. So it follows reasonably that you need to die to self. Are you with me? This is the gospel. You should get excited about this. I can't wait to die. Because on the other side of me dying, there's life and life eternal. There is more of Jesus and less of me. We need to decrease so that Jesus can increase. That's what John the Baptist said as well. So being, making a willing decision to put my body as a living sacrifice on the altar of the kingdom of God, I'm giving my all to the kingdom of God and saying, Lord, have your way. And that makes me holy. That makes me acceptable. To God. How powerful is that? But it starts with a decision, a choice to present my body. God won't make me present my body. I have to choose willingly to be the sacrifice. A principle that you need to know from the Bible is that Jesus is our example in everything. Jesus willingly came to earth, born in human form, grew up, did not rely on his divinity at all. Everything he did was as an example to us. This is how you can live in beautiful relationship and intimacy with God the Father. All the time, he went away to pray early in the morning. He spent time with the Father. He said, I only do what the Father tells me to do. I only say what the Father tells me to say. He knew the Scriptures because he studied the Scriptures, not because he had a matrix download. He studied the Scriptures since he was young. That's how he knew it. And in the Jewish culture, by the time they are 13, they need to know the first five books of the Bible. Did you know that? So he had to learn. He had to know. Anyway. But that's how he knew how to say it is written to the enemy. He's our example in everything. And what did Jesus come to do? He willingly chose to be a living sacrifice so that all of us can be set free from the penalty of sin, the power of sin, and the presence of sin. By choosing Him, we are set free and made new, and we can have life and life and eternal. And while we are still here, we can have heaven on earth. And this is what the church is. The church is a contact point for heaven meeting earth so that those who are lost can be touched by the presence of God and the presence of the church of the holy ones, the gathering of the saints. And that's when lives change. Come on. Can you get excited about that? Three of you. Thank you. Now, after Paul has taught them that they should present their bodies as a living sacrifice that is holy and acceptable to God, which is their reasonable service, he says in verse 2, and, so plus, I'm building on what I've already told you, plus, do not be conformed to this world. In other words, do not become the same as, do not operate as if you are in this world. But, so he contrasts, what you shouldn't do with what you should do. And he says, be transformed. By what? The renewing of your mind, that you may prove or discern what the good and acceptable perfect will of God is. How many people have you, have you spoken to like, I don't know what God's will is for my life. I don't know this. I don't know that. I don't know why I'm here. I don't know where I'm going. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Do not be conformed to this world. 
but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you can discern what is the acceptable will of God. The extent to which you do not know is the extent to which you have not been renewing your mind. That's such a good word. He says, be transformed. He doesn't say, lie in a field and wait for the Holy Spirit to transform you. He says, be transformed. It's a decision. It's a choice. It's a surrendering. It's a giving over. He's saying it on top of that, I have now chosen to be a living sacrifice. In other words, I've given myself. And now I won't be conformed to this world, but I will choose daily to be renewed, to to, to be transformed by the renewing of my mind. How many of you have seen the Transformers movies? One or a few of them. Transformers movies? All right. What happens to a Transformer? The robot. He's first a car or a truck or something, right? And then when he needs to fight, he turns into a freaking machine robot thing with a gun, right? You've seen that? They change and they make all these cool sounds. But what happens when he's done? He changes back into the core. So is he transformed? Not really. Now, take a, um, what's a risper in English? A caterpillar, thank you. Take a caterpillar that closes himself up in a cocoon, poppy. <laughs> this is why I bring Leanne along. Closes himself into a cocoon, and then after a few weeks, we see a butterfly. Does a butterfly look anything like the caterpillar? What is that? A true transformation. He can't go back to being a caterpillar. Do you see the difference? So do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed, all right? What does that mean? It means that before Jesus, I was one way. There's such a beautiful line from the the series, The Chosen, when someone speaks to Mary, they they ask her about Jesus, and she says, I don't know what to tell you, but what I do know is that before I met him, I was one way, but after I met him, I was another. (laughs) That's what should happen. That is what should happen is before Jesus, I was one way, and after Jesus, I am another. I am transformed, but it's a continuous process of sanctification to be that. Amen? Wow, this is so powerful. Now, by the renewing of the mind so that you know what His will is, if we want to know the will of God, we need to let Him work in us daily. It's a daily choice. And then he goes into something quite powerful. He says, For I, through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, to not think of himself more highly than he ought to, but to think soberly as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function, so we being many are one body in Christ and individually members of one another, having gifts differing according to the grace that's given to us. Let us use them. If prophecy, prophesy in proportion to your faith or ministry in your ministering. He who teaches in teaching, he who exhorts in exhortation, he who gives with liberality, he who leads with diligence, he who sows mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil, cling to what is good, and be affectionately loving, kind, kindly affectionate to one another. What is Paul saying? He is talking to a church, remember, a divided church. He is telling them that they need to present their bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. That they must not be conformed to this world where there is what? Division, fighting, not getting along but to be transformed by the renewing of their mind to think more like Christ and be less of them and more of Christ. Why? Because he's getting to this point. You are the church of God. You are part of one body. You can only function as one body with many members if each member is individually dead to self and alive to Christ. This church can double, triple, quadruple in size. If each member who is here right now will make this decision, I will die to self. I will give my all for the kingdom of God and be a part of what God is doing in this church. 
I will submit to the leadership because the leadership was put here by Jesus himself. And I will, when I submit under my leaders, I submit under the kingship of Jesus. And I will not be um, irritated or annoyed by anything that's asked of me. I will gladly serve. I will get on my knees and I will clean toilets. I will welcome people at the door. I will hand out flyers. However I can further the kingdom of God, I give my all. I have certain gifts. Each one of you have special gifts, natural talents. You've got platforms. You have ways and means of doing things. God has given it to you for a reason, for a purpose. And it's for the kingdom of God through the church. Do not believe the lie. Do not be deceived that you can be the church on your own. It is a lie. It will lead you into isolation and being lonely and being ineffective for the kingdom of God. You have to be part of the body of Christ. If you don't believe me, let me read to you Ephesians 4 from verse 11. Jesus, he himself, gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. One, for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry. The fivefold ministry, your pastor and people like him, are there for what? To equip you for the work. Say worked with me. One, two, three. Work. Yes, work of ministry. Work is a verb. A verb as action. Tell yourself, I'm called for ministry. One, two, three. I'm called for ministry. Well done. Now like you believe it. One, two, three. I'm called for ministry. Hallelujah. And you have a pastor that is here to equip you for that work of ministry. Thank you, Jesus. But you all have a job. And now you can't say, I've never heard that before. Sorry for spoiling it. You have work to do that your pastor is equipping you for. What does that work look like? You lead a small group. You share scripture with people. You help a single mom to move. You are part of your community and you sacrifice and you help wherever you can. That is what it looks like. Wherever you've got a gift, that's where how you serve and that's how you sow. Secondly, the fivefold ministry is there for the edifying of the body of Christ. Until... There's a process and then there's a goal. We all, all of us who are in this church, who are saints and working for the equipping of, uh, for, sorry, for the building of the ministry, until we all come to, one, the unity of faith, two, to the knowledge of the Son of God, three, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Wow! What is the key to becoming more like Christ? Be part of the body of Christ. Give your all to the kingdom of God. That is the key. Do you want to be more like Jesus? Get stuck into the local church. Do you want to learn who you are and what the will of God is for your life? Get stuck into the local church. Come with a humble, loving heart to serve and give your all for the kingdom of God. It is not about you. It's not about this platform. It is about what God is doing in His kingdom in this area. If He has called you to be here, He has a reason for you that is much bigger than your job description. Or you're the reason that you flew over here all the way. There's a much bigger reason, and it's a kingdom reason. I can promise you that. I have to finish. It's so difficult. I've got so much more to share with you, but I think the point has been made. Let us stand and let us reflect and respond to this word of our God. I want to read that first part of Romans 12 again. Please close your eyes and focus on Jesus. My brothers and my sisters, I urge you by the mercies of God to choose to make a decision to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service, your proper worship. And my brother, my sister, don't allow yourself to become like the world around you, but choose daily to be transformed by choosing to let your mind be renewed by the truth of the Word of God. Let the lies of the enemy fall off. Take off every cultural mask and preconceived idea that you may be looking at Jesus with. 
and say, Lord, show me your truth for my life. Because brothers and sisters, all of us have been called to serve, to love, and to help the local church to say, I give my all for his kingdom. If you're here this morning and you have never given your life to Christ, you've never made a decision. Maybe you're like I was. You grew up in church and therefore you're convinced you're a Christian. But today you realize, oh my word, I, I, I don't think I've ever made a decision. I can't say that there was a day where I was one way and I chose Jesus and I was another. If that's you, I want to ask you today that you will just slip up your hand and say, that's me. I want to give my life to Jesus. And I'd like to pray with you and lead you into the best family the world has ever seen, the family of Jesus Christ. If that's you, please lift up your hand. If you're wondering whether it is you, you're probably feeling a tug at your heart, probably feeling some kind of um, emotion driving up in you. I'm seeing one hand. Praise Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Please keep that hand up. Anyone else? Anyone else want to make a decision to follow Jesus? There's one more. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. There's three. Thank you, Jesus. Four at the back. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. If you would be so bold as to come to the front so we can pray with you, I would really appreciate that. Everyone that's put up their hands, would you move to the front here so we can pray with you, please? Thank you. Let's give God a praise offering for every hand lifted up, every life changed right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come to the front. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you. Just to be clear, this is a first-time decision to follow Jesus, and I want to pray with you. Come to the front, brother. Come to the front. We love you. We love you. This is a safe space. There's no reason to feel awkward. This is wonderful. Thank you, Jesus. Anyone else join us right now, right now? Come to the front. Wonderful. All right. We're going to pray with them to support them. Amen. I'm going to lead you in a prayer. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to pray because I don't want this to just to be an emotional decision. I want this to be a decision that comes from the depths of your spirit and you realize I am a sinner in need of a Savior and I want to step into this family of God today. Amen. All right. So would you open your hands like this just before heaven and before Jesus and just if you are willing just to choose now to pray this after me. Lord Jesus, Today I choose to wholeheartedly surrender my whole life to you. I choose today to give my all to the kingdom of God. I know that I'm a sinner, but I know that you died for all of my sins. Thank you, Jesus. I receive that. I believe that. And I ask your forgiveness for all of my sins. I repent of all of it. And from today, I choose to live for you and you alone. I choose to die to self, to present my body a living sacrifice, which is my reasonable service. And I will live for you until I die and then for eternity. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Love you, brother. Thank you so much. Welcome, welcome. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, brother. Make sure that you connect with the pastor and his team, um, that they can follow up with you and make sure that you get some resources and become a part of this family. If there's anyone here today that you've given your life to Christ, you've walked with Him, but you realize this morning that, man, I, I didn't realize or I've neglected to really live with my all for Him. And you think, like, you realize this morning, man, I need to come back home or I need to seriously recommit my life to Him. If that's you, if you just want to say, Lord, I've given my life before, but today I come home and I say, I have not, I've been compromising but I want to come and wholeheartedly again live for you. If that's you, will you also just raise up your hand? I'm not going to call you to the front. I just want to see those hands come up. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. This is a big decision. This is huge. This is important. 
pray with me. Lord Jesus, today I choose to come home again. I repent of losing my way, of doing things my own way. But today I come home. I repent of all my sin and of all my prodigal ways. And I ask that you forgive me, wash me clean, make me new. Lord, like David, I want to pray that you create in me a new heart and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Strengthen me and guide me. Holy Spirit, empower me to present my body a living sacrifice daily, to pick up my cross daily and to live for you. Lord Jesus, help me to know how I can serve my local church. Open the way and show me how I can give my all for your kingdom. And I choose to be obedient when you show me. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Let's give God a praise offering. Hallelujah. I just want to end off by praying for this beautiful church and your, your pastors. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you have planted this church, that you are in this church, that you are in this community. Father, I pray for Pastor Rihanna and Marlies that you will bless them, strengthen them, and guide them. I pray that you will shower them with heaven's resources to do everything that you've called them to do. We thank you for everything you've done up until now, and we pray that you will take it from strength to strength and glory to glory. Thank you, Father, that you will lead each person in this church to a place where they will lovingly and humbly come and serve wholeheartedly, giving all for your kingdom, and that this church will go exactly where you want it to go in being effective for the furthering of the kingdom of God. We pray that in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 What a blessing. Amen. Today, but you've been a blessing this whole weekend. Thank you, thank you so much. Amen. Let's just close the service. Father, we thank you for such a privilege we had to just gather together as a church this morning. My prayer is, Lord, that as your children go out of this place and into this week, that you would absolutely just bless and protect and just be with your children and the word that was spoken this morning that you will be the preacher in each and every heart and each and every mind that every seed that was sown this morning that it will fall on good ground and it will multiply and just bring forth fruit in the lives of your people father we pray this morning that you will bless your people the Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. The Lord turn his face, his favor, his grace toward you and bring peace into your lives and to your homes. The Lord shower you with favor and opportunity and protection in this week to come. Father, show up Show out to your children this week. Bless us with your presence. All we want is you. We give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Be blessed. Have a good week, everyone. Thank you.